it's not just a question of honesty. It's actually, it's a, it's a more profound value than that. It's a, it's a value of fairness. If you know that the money doesn't grow on trees, if you know there's a price tag for everything, who pays? And I think when you ask who pays, you start at the top and work down. You shouldn't do what George Osborne announced, which is start at the bottom and work up. OK, so in that spirit of fairness or honesty, whatever you want to call it, would you be fair or honest about other taxes, for example, restoring the 50p rate? No, I don't think we should re restore the 50p uh, rate. So now, you know, you're hurling everything at the Tories, you know, calling them the nasty party and so on. Does this herald seven months of, of fighting and bickering at the top of the government? Um, look, uh, by the way, I'm, 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 I don't follow this that closely, but I've been told that you know, I'm called things at Conservative Party conference time that you wouldn't even be able to repeat on a family show I'll like this. Only a family show like this. Look, look I, I've got a thick skin. People say, particularly in conference season, they, you know, people use language sometimes. It's intemperate. That's not kind of the issue. The, the issue is what's changed over the last couple of weeks is not actually the coalition government. We will continue to govern, as we said, through till May next year. You know, that's, that's kind of, everyone's been telling me for the last four and a half years that it's going to collapse next Tuesday. It's not. It's going to carry on. We will cross the finishing line. What's changed is that the visions of the future, which are now being spelled out after the next election, quite predictably perhaps, are diverging and diverging quite sharply. You've brought up yourself the, some of the insults hurled at you by the Tories. I mean, to take some of the more repeatable ones, um, <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson called you the clegger, uh, sort of contemptuous really, like you're his Eton skivvy or whatever yes. they call it, Eaton. Um, what do they call it, Eaton? <laughs> Um, anyway, anyway. Isn't it I'm fagging either, or something? Either, anyway, anyway. Um, different he, at Westminster. Know, yeah. um, but could Indeed. you deal with a Boris Johnson as Prime Minister? Look, at the, the end of the day... He's uh, been pretty rude about you. He can be as rude as... I mean, he spends all his time sort of fiddling with his hair and, and, and dishing out insults to people. Look, uh, it's not really... It's not really what I think about, personally, about another politician. It's what the British people think about what they want for the future of the country. And I... I you know, I know this is going to sound a little bit pious. I actually take the kind of public duty of being in government and of having sorted out the economic mess that we inherited and having created political stability without which the economic recovery would not have taken root. Right. I take that so very seriously. So you don't care whether it's Boris Johnson in number 10, David Cameron, Ed Miliband, you will Listen, do a deal with I would love it to be Nick Clegg. I would love, I would love there That's to be... That's not going to happen. A, well, the... maybe not immediately, Cathy, but I would love there to be a Liberal Democrat government. I want more people to vote for my party for the reasons I've explained because we can then deliver the policies that we care about. What... What other people think about other politicians is kind of up to them. It's not my job to kind of allow personal whims and wishes and insults and compliments um, and all the brickbats that get slung around at co conference season to cloud your judgment. Your judgment, surely, in politics has got to be about what you think you know, is right for the country in the longer term. And that's what I will try and focus on. Now, I've waited nearly two years to do an interview with you about the allegations that we broadcast against Lord Reynolds. And now, here we are sitting mm. doing this interview. So. Mm. Are you happy that four women Lib Dems have quit the party and Lord Renard is welcomed mm. back into the fold? One of those women, by the way, your former special advisor. No, of course I'm not happy. And, uh, you know, these women, uh, they went to you because they felt they weren't being listened to. And so something went badly wrong. They were not being listened to. The party did not uh, respond to concerns that were raised at the time in the right way. OK, uh, but are you entirely content now that Lord Renard has been welcomed back into the fold? He's potentially can play a role in the general election. He can return to the Federal Policy Committee. Are you happy with that? Uh, I can only describe, you know, what's happened. He issued, and I won't put it any more strongly than that, a qualified apology. It was a qualified apology. Um, the relevant committee that looked at this uh, decided to... Um, a call of the day there. behind the committees. What do you think about no, no, the no. fact that... Well, I'd be, are you I, oh, I said what I think. Are I'm you sorry. happy for him to play oh, no, a role sorry, in the I'd general be, election campaign? I'd be very clear. He's not going to play any role in, in, in the way I administer the general election campaign. Miriam, your wife, has said uh, yesterday, I think it was, that she doesn't want it all. She just wants what men have. Do you think in politics women have what men have? No. No, clearly not. No, clearly not. And if you just look at Westminster, it is still a very sort of testosterone-driven, male-dominated environment. Westminster, in my view, is now dangerously, dangerously out of step with modern Britain. I've tried my little bits to change bits of it. I wanted a smidgen of democracy in the House of Lords. That was blocked by Labour and the Conservatives. I wanted to change the way that people voted. That was blocked by them. I wanted to change the way parties were funded. That was blocked by them. But, you know, at the end of the day, I've, oddly enough, Given that I'm constantly being told, oh, you know, you've become part of the establishment. Oddly enough, having been in government for four and a half years, I've become more rather than less anti-establishment. And at one, some point, 
the big vested interests and the two larger parties really do need to kind of wake up and smell the coffee. We can't carry on with this clapped out way of doing politics in Westminster. Deputy Prime Minister, thank you very much. Thank you.